Hey guys, welcome to Xbox On. Now here on the channel, we've been taking a closer look at the different games you can expect to see coming to Xbox One this year. And what better genre to concentrate on next than the wide world of adventure? It's out there and soon enough, we'll be able to get involved too. So here are 12 adventure games to get excited for in 2017. Now, when you think about adventure, there's nothing more adventurous than the great open seas. Sea of Thieves is an upcoming co-op multiplayer adventure where you play as pirates, or should I say, Pirates. No, that, that doesn't work, does it? Sea of Thieves is all about teamwork. To maneuver your ship, you'll need to coordinate your actions. Who's hoisting the sails, who's on the wheel, and who's chucking the anchor down? The game also features user-generated content, so you and your mates will have the ability to craft your own custom adventure. The gang at Rare are slowly teasing more of the game, running a series of closed technical alphas to let a lucky few sample the seafaring life. They've shown people trying to find buried treasure by heading to the big X on the map, and once you've dug up the loot, always faster with more people, you then have to carry the physical chest all the way back to your pirate. At HQ. As it's a physical object, it means it can be stolen from your ship by invaders or, if you're really clever, thrown overboard to act as a diversion when enemies are in pursuit. We've also seen our first glimpse of a rampaging skeleton army. It's not just your fellow humans who are out to gut you. With beautiful oceans stretching as far as the eye can see and endless possibilities of adventure lying ahead for you, Sea of Thieves really is going to be amazing. See, I got there in the end. I am really excited for this next game. Little Nightmares is set inside a strange underwater resort called The Moor. It casts you as Six, a fragile girl in a yellow raincoat who has to escape the horrors that call The Moor home. In motion, it reminds us of a 3D limbo or unravel. All the puzzles involve clambering over the environment and heaving heavy objects into place. But you also have to contend with the monsters who run the place, such as impossibly long arms that will grab you or a slobbering chef who wants to put you in his pot. When these creatures are chasing you, the game can be surprisingly scary. It's like a slightly less violent version of escaping the bakers in Resident Evil 7. It's a bit like my first survival horror. We can't wait to play more. Now I know this is cheating a bit as I talked about Morrowind in our RPG guide, but I got to see a bit more of what we can expect from the game and I wanted to tell you guys about it. So Morrowind is going to include the base Elder Scrolls Online game, so new gamers to the franchise won't be alienated. You can play through everything Morrowind has to offer and then jump into the main game afterwards. One thing that was stressed is that this is the best time to start playing the game. It's got a huge fan base so you'll have plenty of company on your adventures. Fans of the original Morrowind are definitely going to want to get involved. There's tons of nostalgia and throwbacks and considering this expansion is set 700 years before the events of Elder Scrolls 3, you'll see what came before all that destruction. There'll be two new public dungeons, tons of new loot and achievements, and a giant scavenger hunt quest. The new class, the Warden, will be nature focused and has a bear following him around all the time to help with combat. I mean, come on, a bear, that is so damn cool. The PvP looks great too, small scale battles of 4v4v4 in awesome looking maps which reward cunning and battle rather than just hiding off in the distance somewhere and spamming from afar. All in all, whether you're already an Elder Scrolls Online fan or were thinking of diving in for the first time, Morrowind is the perfect chance. Now, as an absolutely huge Metal Gear Solid fan, I am very intrigued by Metal Gear Survive. So here's the deal. Hideo Kojima, aka game director, writer, and overall god, is the man behind the Metal Gear series. However, Kojima left Konami in 2015, so this is the first Metal Gear game without his guidance, which of course will fill fans of the series with an air of caution. But it's early days, so I'm determined to go and open-minded. So what exactly is Metal Gear Survive? Well, it's set in the same time period as The Phantom Pain, but with a very big difference. It's basically a co-op survival game where you take down strange mutant zombie type things. The way it relates to the Metal Gear universe is that it's big bosses soldiers who play the starring role. They're transported to an alternate reality by a wormhole at the end of Ground Zeroes. Their new home is full of an army of zombies and scattered resources that can be used to build new bases and craft better weapons. What really excites me about this is the idea of using the in-depth mechanics from the Phantom Pain in collaboration with friends. One person could distract the horde while the other three sneak around the back and claim an objective. Or several people could camp on high ridges and lay down sniper cover. A bit like choir, only with slightly more practical clothes. Whilst it may not be a classic Metal Gear, I do have high hopes that it'll still be a seriously fun game to play with mates and shoot zombies. Then we are in for a treat. 
It's been seven years since we last delved into the world of Crackdown, and this year's offering promises to be just as manic and, well, destructible as ever. As with previous games, you'll play a secret agent with super strength, speed and agility, along with some awesome superpowers to match. You're also pretty amazing at shooting, driving and all that other important secret agent stuff, so you can expect that Employee of the Year certificate is definitely on the way. Crackdown 3 promises to have a vibrant open world as in previous installments, whilst also amping up the levels of destruction. The potential to go absolutely crazy and destroy everything you see is available. Yep, had a bad day at work? Go punch some buildings, that'll help you relieve that stress. As the weapons and upgrades increase, so will your ability to really mess up the city. I hope you're planning on cleaning that mess up after you. One thing to note is that if you want the full destruction experience, then that's only available in online multiplayer modes, using incredible new cloud computing technology to allow the entire city to be blown to smithereens. Back in campaign mode, you'll find less destruction, but you can still have a huge amount of fun gobbling up ability orbs and laying the smack down on criminal scum. So go grab a friend and go punch a skyscraper. You deserve it. Now, if you prefer your adventures absolutely adorable, then Ukulele will be right up your street. Ukulele could be seen as the spiritual successor to Banjo Kazooie, as it's made by a group of ex Rare developers. In the same way that Banjo Kazooie's name was melded from the instruments Banjo and Kazoo, Ukulele is a play on the instrument Ukulele. I know, right? Mind blown. So, enough of wordplay. What exactly is this game all about? Well, those adorable critters Yuka and Laylee, aka a chameleon and a bat, venture from the safety of their home to go explore more dangerous areas in their quest to collect pages. Once they have the pages they need, they can stop Capital B and Dr. Quack, aka the baddies with the most terrifying names ever, from absorbing all the world's literature. Those swines. Gameplay wise, it will feel very familiar to Banjo and Kazooie fans. One player controlling two characters working together simultaneously, blended neatly with non stop collecting in a bright 3D platforming world. You'll be exploring worlds contained in different books so you can collect those all important pages. You'll finish the world off with a classic boss battle before you adventure into the next world. Throw in an incredibly chirpy soundtrack that will worm its way into your brain forever, and this is shaping up to be one of 2017's best. It's finally almost time for State of Decay 2, so all you zombie loving gamers out there, hold on to your weapons because it's about to get serious. Now you know the gist, a zombie apocalypse has broken out and staying alive suddenly wasn't as easy as it was before. You're either some thing's next meal or getting in the way of someone's survival. In State of Decay 2, you'll be teaming up online with up to three friends to survive the apocalypse, yet the developers Undead Labs have made it very clear that it's not an MMO. Gameplay wise, it looks set to take what made State of Decay so awesome and improve on that. You'll be scavenging for resources and building communities along with other fellow survivors. Try and keep order going as long as possible because you know it won't be long before everything goes horribly wrong, as is the way with those pesky zombie apocalypses. There won't be a shining Rick Grimes though, as each character is as important as the last, each fulfilling their roles with different stats and traits to keep everyone alive. State of Decay was an absolute classic on Xbox 360, and this is looking even better. Thimbleweed Park started life as a Kickstarter project, but now it's almost time for it to spread its wings and become a full-blown release. So what exactly is Thimbleweed Park? Simply put, it's a point-and-click, pixelated adventure full of juicy puzzles and an even juicier storyline. A body has been found in the river of a town which was once hugely successful, but now reeks of despair and failure. Two detectives show up to try and solve the mystery, and things start to get very weird as more characters join the mix. A clown, a game designer, and the ghost of a pillow salesman. You can switch and play between multiple characters as you explore the strange town of Thimbleweed Park as you unravel its dark comedy secrets. It was co-created by Ron Gilbert, the genius creator of Maniac Mansion and Monkey Island, so point and click fans will definitely want to pay attention. And while we're on the subject of pointing and clicking, let's give a shout out to Siberia 3. It continues the fine work of the Siberia series, which is all about the journey of a lawyer across a steampunky version of Europe and Russia. The series is a bit of a cult hit, loved by its fans for its oddball characters, involving puzzles and slightly skewed versions of the world. Even if you didn't play the original games on PC, you'll be able to hop into the story and enjoy this new chunk of the journey. If you enjoy your story-led games, but are a bit tired of Telltale and the light cramming tough moral dilemmas down your throat every 10 seconds, then Siberia 3's more subtle pace will be for you. 
If you enjoyed Gone Home, then you're going to want to check out Tacoma from the same team. Fulbright are keeping their cards pretty close to their chest, but what we have seen looks really interesting. The action is set in the Lunar Transfer Station Tacoma, which is 200,000 miles away from Earth. Rather than just exploring the station and collecting written notes, as in Gone Home, you'll see the past actions of crew members play out as colourful holograms. The idea of creeping through an eerily quiet space station, piecing together the tale from these rainbow ghosts, has us really intrigued. Now, if you're looking for a beautiful and moving adventure, then look no further than Fee. The game focuses heavily on exploration, discovery, and learning about the gorgeous world around you. You'll awaken as a young cub all alone in the forest. From there on out, you'll fly, climb, and jump your way across a stunning landscape of dreamy color and fantasy creatures. From the mouth of the devs themselves, it's a story that reminds us that everything in this world is connected, living in a delicate balance that is constantly under threat. So basically, if you're looking for something which is dreamy, yet thought-provoking at the same time, then make sure to dive into fee. Tom Clancy's Ghost Recon Wildlands is just around the corner and looks set to be absolutely amazing. This time round, the ghosts are being sent to Bolivia to take down a major drug cartel, you know, as you do. Just one of these days, they deserve an all-inclusive sunbathing fest in the Bahamas. They must be knackered. Bolivia looks set to be a gorgeous backdrop for Wildlands. There promises to be hundreds of villages, local landmarks, and just things to explore and shoot up, really. From highlands to salt flats to jungles and canyons, expect to have plenty of variety to explore. Speaking of which, Wildlands is the first in the franchise to be set in an open world environment, so expect to spend a lot of your time simply exploring and taking it all in. And, you know, stopping an evil drug cartel along the way. The map looks set to be huge too, so this is definitely a game you can sink a lot of hours into. Each mission gives you various amounts of choices, from day-night cycles to a full weather system, which will definitely affect how you take on each mission. Similar to Metal Gear Solid 5, nighttime usually makes for easier stealth, and sometimes adverse weather conditions can actually be your friend. Plus, if you're a fan of character customization, then your ghosts themselves can be tinkered with, allowing you to change their gear and appearance to whatever you see fit. You're gonna wanna look your best in front of your mates as the entire game can be done in co-op between two to four players. Your friends can drop in and out, taking down the forces of evil together whilst looking fly as hell. Nice. And there we have it, plenty of adventure games to get excited for in 2017. Let us know in the comments section which game you're most excited for and make sure to smash that subscribe button if you're new to the channel to stay up to date with all our awesome content. I'll see you next time, bye!